We've had the winter break, we've made some transfers, spent quite a bit of money and got some outs as well. So, roll the intro, it's time for Olympia Ljubljana. Welcome back to the NK Maribor Save. Hello and welcome back to the Journeyman Save. I am Cultured Left Foot and I haven't made that sort of error in quite a while. But here we are. We are with Ljubljana. We have a game in hand which is going to be played today against MK Domzali, the reigning champions of the Slovenian Premier League. So it's not it's not an easy game. It's not a walkover for sure. We can go top if we win this. It will put us on 45 points which would be very nice indeed. As you can see, we've actually been pretty successful as a club, Ljubljana, winning the last two league titles when Maribor won it in 2016-17. But it's not going all our way. We have actually won the two games. I've played two games after the winter break because I've been, basically, I used all these friendlies to tweak tactics and try and sort something out. So they sort of got harder as we went. Um, we won 2-0 away to that team, whoever they are, Zam Edviad getting two. Then we drew 0-0 with Poly um, away, I think they're Romanian, I think. Yeah, second division Romanian team, not a great result. We then won 2-1 against Plostiev, another Romanian team, Medved getting another two goals. We drew 1-1 with Batran Dumana, uh, John Mary getting our goal in that. And then we beat Stromsged TF at home, our only home friendly in the winter break. Uh, they were the hardest team we had to play. We won 2-1, Stefan Savic and Andreas Vonberger getting the goals. We then went on to the league. We beat Alumja, Alumni 2-1. Um, something quite crucial has happened that probably meant we beat them easier than we should have done. Um, our goal was going from uh, centre-back Bialik and striker Von Berger in the 73rd minute, straight after they'd equalised. And we've just beaten ND Godisa 1-0 away from home. Timmy Elznick getting a goal, a new signing, who Slovenian uh, viewers of my channel will probably recognise the name Timmy Elznick. But let's go through the transfers and see what has happened. So we joined where well, we're looking at everything from January onwards. So we'll start with the outs. We have quite a lot of loan players going out. We won't delve into them. They're not too uh, too much of a big deal. But for 220k, we sold Mitch Apau, who was a right back. And really, he's okay, but he was nowhere near my first team. Uh, we got Pusovar and uh, Klemcic, I think, is the other right back we can play there. But Pusovar's by standout our best right back and we'll be keeping that spot his own and we've sold left back Eliza Kreffel to someone in Romania I think or someone in Slovakia Slovakia we've sold the um, Eliza Kreffel to Slovakia and he's again he's okay he was nowhere near my best left back at the club so was happy to let him go and then a couple more loans have gone the main ones are uh, Turkus he's gone on loan he's got quite a lot of potential so we'll be keeping an eye on how he does and uh, Mladen Lovric who actually made his debut in the game against NK Maribor but since we've brought in some replacements he was allowed to go out on loan the only other thing to really report is um the guy who scored for us against NK Maribor has now left the club on a free transfer because he just wasn't very good um yeah played one scored one 7.10 but really, with surplus to requirements, he just wasn't good enough and ever going to make the first team whilst we were here. So just thought I'd release him and free up some spaces because the squad was huge. It was absolutely huge. They don't have a B team. So it's just the first team and then under 19s. And the under 19s, as soon as they get to, well, 19 and older, they have to move to the first team because they're ineligible to play for the under 19s. So basically, uh, if they're not good enough, they're just getting released on a free. But on to the ins. So we've brought in Jan Petrik. Welcome to the club. Following us around. Still very highly recommended, um, rated potentially. So more than happy to bring him in. We got him for 105k. Hopefully that'll be worth it. Probably person that's going to follow us around on the journeyman again. Always good to take my Patreons with me. Uh, Johan Terhorst joins for 8k. Um, he's come in. He's played one game and did okay so far. He's not going to get that much game time at this level. He really isn't rated high enough for this sort of level. But he's going to be, if you watch Loki Doki series, he's going to be our Harry Owen, I think, Johan Terhorst. Um, I do have a soft stop for him. Then we brought in Alumji Krid... So we, before I get on to Luka Janzakovic, we outlined 
so I've read all the comments as well over the weekend, and we out, we outlined what we needed to buy. Goalkeeper, probably a centre-back, left-back for sure, and um, probably a centre midfielder, I think it was. So I also now know that I should have bought another position as well because we're struggling in a certain area. But Luka Janzakovic joins. He is he was Alumjo's first choice goalkeeper and he was one of the best goalkeepers for his age in Slovenia. We've bought him in for 185 Ks on a seven so far, conceded one goal in two games. But as you can see, he did okay at Alumjo with his average ratings weren't brilliant, but 17 and 17 isn't too bad and 32 and 28 for a team that is never going to be fighting towards the top, is pretty good. So Luka Janzakovic comes in and becomes our first choice goalkeeper. Much better stats than what we currently had. Much better rated current ability and potential ability. So Luka Janzakovic is in the van. Timmy Elznik joins on loan from Derby County. Um, an inside forward on the right, a very, very good player. Lacks a little bit of pace and acceleration, but the crossing and the dribbling, composure, decisions, flair, all of that sort of stuff that I like in my wingers. Um, is quite prevalent, which is very, very good. He started as well, scored a goal um, in one of his two appearances, and got a seven. He's on an average of a seven point three, so already showing that he should be pretty good in the Slovenian Premier League. We've then followed that up by signing a new centre back, Marek Kaizela. Uh, we broke the Slovenian national transfer record, bringing him in one point one million pounds. Um, we've obviously paid over the odds for it, but it was deadline day. I needed to get another defender in, and he's. Now, easily the best defender we've got at the club. Annoyingly, he twisted his ankle in the last friendly. So, he hasn't actually been able to make his uh, first team appearance yet. But, I think this guy is going to be absolutely brilliant and be the stalwart that we need at the back. That really strong person to make a good defensive wall. Next up, Sasa Ivkovic, 180k. I only found out after I bought him that in real life he's just signed for NK Maribor. Um, another holding midfielder slash midfielder that can play in there. Some good stats all round, 11s, 12s, some 13s in there, but ideally good passing, good teamwork, decent work rate, vision positioning, all of these sort of stuffs. Um, stuffs? Stuff is what we need and good stats and attributes there, which are very, very good. So he's made two appearances, averaging a 6.85. Obviously, we won those two games, so it's easy for the players to get good ratings and stuff. So that's good. Staff-wise, we have bought in, uh, I think I can see that in transfers as well. Can I see... Transfer history, staff in, here we go. Um, obviously, I joined as the manager from the Grafschamp. We then brought in Amel Mukajovic as a goalkeeping coach. Not the best, but he has very good goalkeeping attributes, which is what we want to see. Um, he came in from NK Cell, so we nicked their goalkeeping coach. And then we brought in three new scouts. Dalibor Bodanovolovic, 8 and 10. Uh, the scouts aren't brilliant. Murad Gurabi comes in 9 and 10. Uh, and then Roland Cobb comes in at 9 and 8. But we are expanding our knowledge of people that we know with every scout we bring in. That is all the changes that we've done so far. Tactically, we're lining up, obviously, in a 4-1-2-2-1. One, two, two, one. We're playing how I tried to get De Gravesham to play. Uh, Ter Horst is up there as a false 9, although he doesn't really like it. We don't have a striker that can do that role. But what I need is to allow these two wingers to cut in. We sort of need a, a striker that will drop back into a little bit of space. So that's what we're going to try and implement. It's worked so far with two wins from two. However, I am trying to... That's not... This is where I've been playing around with tactics, as you can see. So the other thing I'm trying to implement is a sort of 4-4-2. Um, something like this, where you have, again, one deep line forward, one attacking forward. And then, ideally, you would have one of these probably on defend... Um, Defend the ball and looks to win the ball in the centre of the field and quickly lay off to a more creative player. Probably something like a ball winning midfielder, an advanced playmaker on support, and then one of the wingers maybe on attack, just so that we get the numbers going forward. And then these guys would be fullbacks on support, just so they don't really have to help out too much. And then this would be, ideally, um, a counter-attacking formation that we'd use against slightly bigger teams. So we might use something like this today against MK Domzali, where we're going to look to get the ball forward a little bit quicker, um, maybe not not run at them as much, although, you know, that that's neither here nor there, to be honest. The board want us to play possession football, so this first tactic is going to be our more use at home and use against the weaker teams where we can keep the ball, get that possession. We're going to retain the possession, use short passing, and look to break the other teams down. The 4-4-2 is sort of a formation I want to use where we're struggling or we're playing a bigger team like the Maribors, the Domzales, people like that where we can... Maybe launch the ball over the top and look to get the ball forward a little bit quicker as they push on. I think they should be dominating us. But overall, it's going okay. This will be a tough game. So without further ado, let's get into it. 
Okay, and we are going to use the 4-4-2 formation because they are a big team in Kendon's. I'd say they won the league last year. They've got some very good players. Jan Zakovic lines up in goal. Putovar, Ayup, Bayaric and Sturm make up the back four. Uh, Van Kass, Ricardo Alves, Coletu and Savic are the midfield four. And then up front, Mer Mer I was about to call him Marie. Mary plays with Medved alongside him. Medved obviously was in good form in pre-season or in the winter break, but hasn't really hit the ground running in the league as such. I mean, we've only just started him this season. Two appearances, he's doing okay. He wasn't... I don't know why he wasn't in and around the first team, but he, actually, well, he's very good. He's got good stats. He's doing okay. Uh, I'm going to say... Well, let's go aggressive and say that we owe NK Domzali. That seems to fire quite a lot of the guys up and then talk to them passionately. I have faith in you. Get out there. That seems to work as well. Tunnel, we'll let the assistant do that for now. And they'll get the game underway. So the other position we really should have invested in, but I thought we had good numbers. We sh really should have looked for an out-and-out goal-scoring striker because that's where we're struggling. If we look at the league table next time it comes up, as uh, this is what I was hoping would happen. We launch a counter-attack and try to get up forward early on. As Ricardo Alves is put in, why is he squared that there? I mean, Van Kass shoots from an even worse angle, but why is he squared that, Ricardo Alves? If we look at the league table here... Look at the goals. We've only got a goal difference of plus seven. That's not very good. If you think Maribor are plus 21, and when we were Maribor manager last season in FM17, our goal difference was humongous, like plus 40 or something. So in the hunt of the summer window, my main find will try and be looking for a striker is uh, NK Domzali come forward here. Sidok, it's cleared very well. Now, can we launch a counter like we want to? Medved looking for Mary. It's a poor pass, and Dobrovic... Picks it up back to Vidmar. Vidmar with a big long clearance. I mean, the 4-4-2 isn't a shape and formation I normally enjoy to play, but it does. It is one of the ones that works best on a counter attack. As Mary with the header, it goes just over the bar. But yeah, the 4-4-2 is a good formation to implement for the counter attack, and it is very helpful to do that. Um, we must improve our game, especially in creating chances. Well, if you can let me know how to do that, that would be great. Mary, can you find Medved? He does. Medved. Medved shoots oh, off the post, off the goalkeeper. It could have gone anywhere. And we are really dominating this game. I think we're even getting more possession, which is great. Alves with the ball in. I haven't done set pieces and stuff yet for this. For well, for the four four two, it is a formation we used in the in the winter break. As Kramer comes forward, it's a good tackle. And Alves back to Janzakovic with a long ball forward, looking for Mary. Dobrovic picks it up. Medved. Med. It's not Medved. Would it be Medved or Medved? I don't know. I'll keep using the two. Let me know which one you prefer it to be. So after this game. Um, Lovre, Lovro Gaming, um, we're just going to call him Lovro from now on, will be getting his regen. He suggested on a previous comment that he's happy for it to be someone who's already at the club. So we'll be picking someone out for you as uh, Van Kass comes forward, gets to the buy. What, what is that? What is that? That is stu stupidly ridiculous. Ivkovic up to Matajic. So they've got an overlap that we have to be careful of. Vetri into Usmani. Usmani to Yugova. Good tackle. Now, Mary, what can you do there? Holds on to it. Back up to Vankas. Don't shoot. I know you like to shoot, but don't shoot. Alves. Back to Vankas. Vankas up the line. Good ball in. At the back post. Savic to the left back. Mary's put it in. John Mary gets the goal. Stefan Savic, I thought, was going to head for goal. But he knocked it down. Whether it was deliberate or not, that puts us up to the top of the league as Vankas here. Vankas took a time. Put a great ball into the back post. I think he was more playing for an area. Goalkeeper came walkabouts, knocked down. Well, the goalkeeper was so out of position, the knockdown worked really, really well. And it was great. 1 0. So we have a corner. Savage swings it in, looking for. It's there. Knocked down. Medved. Oh, he's hit the bar. He's absolutely crashed it against the bar. We are taking Domzale to the cleaners at the moment. Look at this. 10 shots to 4. 10, sorry, 11 shots, 4 on target to their 2 and 0. This has been a really good performance from us so far. Alves not having the best of games in the middle, which is annoying because he's our best midfielder. But so far, so good. As folks, we get into half time and we still have that 1 0 lead. Um, I don't really. What are the assistants, I should say? Uh, we should try and encourage the team. How well does he know? He must have been here for quite a while. We didn't bring him in, so. Let, oh, for God's sake. Uh, right, talk to players passionately. You weren't that bad, I can believe you still improve. So, uh, Sritu has still turned off. Let's just have a quick jump into the analysis. Medved's been an injury. He suffered a bruised head. He's got a bruised head he can play on. Uh, might have been shots, but they're from long range. I don't really want to change that at the moment. No, I'm, I'm happy with what we're doing. I mean, you can see how much we're sort of playing, focusing down a bit more of the right, and they're focusing 
They've had a lot of the... Why is their heat map showing them? They're very high up the pitch, which is probably why our counter-attacking is working pretty well. I'm going to leave Ricardo Alves on just for a little bit longer. We can sub him off for um, Ivkovic, the new signing, and maybe drop him back to a deep-line playmaker. So... We're just going to see how it goes, keep it going. We are top of the league with this win at the moment, which is really good. So I've got a viewer's question for you. We haven't done one of these in a little while. I'd like to know your comment down below. Let me know. Um, and also, if you're enjoying the video, enjoying the series, leave a like. Every like lets me get bigger on YouTube and more people can find me. But the question, um, what we're going to go with is how... Well, not how, that's not at all what I was going with. What sort of save? Oh, Mary from range, unlucky. What sort of save do you prefer to see? Do you prefer to see this journeyman sort of save where you're always bouncing around clubs? Or do you prefer to see a one club save like NK Maribor last year? Or a bit of a mix where I try and stay at a club for a longer time and win as much as I can, then just move to another club and stay there and build a, <clears throat> build a dynasty as a sort of manager from club to club? Um, I've really enjoyed this journeyman save. I'm, oh, for God's sake. I knew they would score a wonder goal. Is that... Two shots on target, three shots on target, and now it's 1 1. That is so annoying. That always happens in Football Manager. Sturm with the throw is a poor throw from Aston Matea. It's just Zuzek picks it up, puts it into Yugova around the corner, and then Osbald, first time, beats Janzakovic. It's a great finish from that area. Drops us back into second place, and uh, we need to make some subs. So that is the question for today. What sort of save do you prefer? Also, what sort of save. Do you prefer to watch and what sort of save do you prefer to play yourself? What do you do when you're playing it? Do you try and do it all yourself? Now, I could bring on Ter Horst, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to bring on Von Berger. He's going to come on. I think Alves is going to be replaced by Palmer because I didn't put the other guy that I wanted to on the bench. And Palmer's very good as well. Palmer's on loan to us from another club as uh, Milanjek has the ball into Bizjak. Let's not completely fall apart here. Von Berger wins the header on, but it falls to Dublovlic as Mary couldn't get there. Ten minutes to go. Miljanak into Huzmani to Bizjak. They're moving the ball around quite well, NK Domzali, but we just need to nick it. Stern wins the header. Savic isn't going to get there first, though. And Matejic, ball in. Bayardic with a header clearance. This looks like it's going to end in a goal for MK Domzali. Bizjak's there, and it does. They've played that well. They don't deserve it, in my opinion. I really don't think they deserve it because we've dominated them. They've obviously changed something up ever so slightly. As Matejic, it was a good headed clearance from Bayaric, which didn't have a midfielder to go and pick that ball up. As Huzmani put it into Bizjak, looks potentially offside, but I really can't complain that much. We're going to make one final sub, and it's going to be Sturm uh, is going to come off and be replaced by Psycho esque and. I don't really know what else we can do. We might have to come off counter and go on to attacking and just see if we can make something happen from here because that's... I don't want to change too... We've been playing really well in this 4-4-2 counter. Probably should have gone a bit defensive in the second half and it's cost us, but, you know, they did win the league last year. They've got a good team. As I say, we're creating chances. We're just not putting them away. I mean, if you look at this... Clear-cut chances two, half chances four, and we've only scored one goal. I think that strikes you as how much we need a striker. Um, I've tried to make approaches for Zan Selar, Luka Zahovic. Luka Zahovic moves to FC Utrecht, so he's not available. Um, and uh, Zan Selar is coming to the end of his contract, but he doesn't want to discuss terms with us just yet. Um, I'm going to... So unlucky. I'm just going to tell him unlucky, because I think we played very well. It was just unlucky. I think as well, we're going to just do a one-game episode today, because... Um, I've just checked the time. We're running into about 20 minutes. So after I edit it, it's probably going to be about 15 to 16 minutes, which is uh, a reasonable length time for an episode. It's, I think it's unlucky. Um, it drags NK Donzani back into the Europa League. Goes, How can you be out for 11 days with a bruised head? And he injured it after jumping, not even heading. Not even heading the ball. What an idiot. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with me. As I said, leave a like if you're enjoying the series and the video. Um, and there'll be more hopefully daily every day and um, my stream schedule is hopefully going to start happening every Monday so after this video comes out about an hour after this video comes out hopefully I will be streaming and it will be the Man United save carrying on that Man United save so if you can come along the descriptions the link is in the description below but for now I'll chat to you all very very soon thank you very much for your support but I'm out cheers